We just had Cardano 360 and things are looking unbelievably good. The next 90 days for us are pretty much going to be a victory march. Get ready. Let's go. What we just experienced was kind of like in American football when you have a timeout in the fourth quarter, but you're like destroying the other team and you get into the huddle and the captain of the team is like, hey guys, uh, we didn't really have to have a timeout right here, but I think we're going to score like 21 points in the next three minutes. And I just really wanted to tell you guys that I'm having the victory party at my house and all the cheerleaders are coming. That's a brash and inappropriate comparison. But we pretty much just did experience the blockchain development equivalent of that. And that's because IOHK knows no one can touch what they've already done. And they're like they're they're like in the last hundred meters of a marathon here. The Alonzo rollout plan will proceed by color-coded eras, starting with the blue era, and you can see on this infographic, the blue era will end sometime in mid-June. The blue era will consist of a under 50 user cohort, and it'll include initially SPOs, then some of the Plutus pioneers, then a few of the outside development firms that we're now referring to as the Plutus partners. Uh, this will include basic functionality of the system for the purpose of testing basic contracts. The Plutus partners, those are the outside development firms, will be working on specific areas, including oracles, DEXs, stable coins, NFTs, and DeFi. This will produce code and documentation that will be publicly available. The white era of the Alonzo testnet will be from mid-June to mid-July with a user co cohort of under 500 users. Uh, they'll be adding some more of the Plutus pioneers and more functionality. They'll develop various dApps and there will be interaction on the user side of these dApps. They'll do some benchmarking at this stage. The purple era of the testnet is, seems to be the era when the biggest things are going to happen. It'll go from mid-July to mid-August, and it'll be fully public. So all of the Plutus pioneers will be in there, and anybody else who wants to jump in, it'll involve the Rosetta API to the exchanges, Daedalus, hardware wallets, GraphQL, and full functionality. The purpose of this phase will be optimization. The Alonzo red and black eras will be tiny phases in Aparna's words, and they'll both happen in August. The red era will involve a new network where they can test scalability and stability. The black era will be the final public test net where they will ensure that they have candidate mainnet releases ready to launch for the mainnet. They stress that the Alonzo Hard Fork Combinator event requires a lot of different pieces coming together at the same time, but this is not their first rodeo, and they have a lot of experience with this from the ITN, Shelly, Allegra, Mary, and etc. One of the benefits of this phased rollout plan is to service their commitment to making sure there's a very large group of people who are familiar with using the Alonzo testnet by the time the mainnet launches. Alonzo mainnet, you can see from the infographic, it's positioned in very late August through September. That makes me assume there's a chance of August, much better chance of September, and also even some chance maybe of October or later. This is blockchain development after all. Also, we've already waited years. Why care about a few weeks? We also heard from Lars who let us know once again how pleased and pleasantly surprised he is at how well the Plutus Pioneers are doing. And he gave us a new bit of information and that's that there will be another iteration, another class of the Plutus Pioneers later this summer. We got a pretty big update on Marlowe, including us finding out that there's this thing called Marlowe Run. So Marlowe Run will be a browser product that can run on mobile or desktop. It can be linked to your wallet and be used to run Cardano smart contracts simultaneously on a distributed basis across multiple user browsers. The user interface is light years ahead of anything we saw in Marlowe Meadow or the Marlowe Playground simulations. It will include a library of off the shelf contracts. So I haven't looked into this very deeply so far, but it does appear that it's going to be sort of like uh, an exponentially more realistic, better version of what we saw in the simulations in the Marlowe Playground, where you could sort of see different wallets on your screen and what those wallets would, would be seeing as far as transactions go. 
This is actually going to run in multiple browsers on multiple users' computers at the same time. There will be a Marlow webinar on June 3rd, registration link below. We got another demo of the ERC20 converter. It's looking as seamless and intuitive as ever. It should be on the testnet in June. We got a gigantic update on Hydra. Hydra is the layer two scaling solution for Cardano. We've known about Hydra for a long time, but have you ever noticed nobody ever explains how it works? Here, Manuel Chakravarti explains exactly how Hydra works. Hydra will not require that the base layer be modified since it will be implemented via Plutus smart contracts. Hydra is actually a collection of protocols, including Hydra Head and Hydra Tell. Hydra Head is a symmetric protocol where multiple participants will be online simultaneously for the whole period of the head, exchanging messages. Hydra Tell is an asymmetric protocol involving a high performance server and many clients that may be mobile and could be offline for large portions of the Tell's existence. There will also be inter head and Tell networking, which will allow for a network of heads and tells, right? Makes sense, given the name. They have a published published research paper on Hydra Head. And when they say published, they don't mean published on their website, which is what a lot of crypto projects do. Manuel here actually names the uh, academic journal it was published in and presumably peer reviewed. They are currently writing the Hydra Tell paper. Hydra is distinguished from other layer two protocols by its isomorphic properties. This means you'll be able to run any smart contract that works on the base layer in a Hydra head. So this is pretty cool. Think about this. We won't need special purpose contracts built out just for layer two. And the big implication here is that, like we already said, Hydra head runs through Plutus smart contracts. And any Plutus smart contract can run in a Hydra head. So since Hydra Head is essentially just a Plutus smart contract, this means you can run a Hydra Head inside another Hydra Head. And it sounds like that could be iteratively done as much as you want. So you could have a Hydra Head running inside a Hydra Head running inside a Hydra Head. This is like turtles all the way down, guys. This could be gigantic. I think in the past, I think going back quite a ways, we've heard some people within Cardano, okay, maybe it was just Charles, but I believe we've heard Charles say that Hydra could basically like infinitely scale Cardano. And now we're finally hearing why exactly that is. It's because you can nest Hydras within Hy Hydra heads within Hydra heads within Hydra heads as much as you want. This is kind of a big deal. Yesterday, we talked all about how Ethereum 2.0 is struggling to figure out scalability, given that they have a global state system in Ethereum versus the local state system in Cardano. And now we're hearing that Cardano's layer two scaling solution is maybe infinitely scalable. Things are looking really good for Cardano versus Ethereum 2.0 on scalability, guys. I think Agalos Kiaias as high level of cryptographer as he is, I think he has a pretty good sense of humor. He started his piece of the presentation off by saying he was broadcasting from foggy, breezy Edinburgh, <laughs> which is a pretty good inside joke given that Charles always starts his Colorado broadcasts as coming to you from warm and sunny Colorado. So Aglos though also gave a really good, very easy to understand presentation on the importance of skin in the game in resource-based consensus protocols. So that would include both proof of work and proof of stake. And he talked about its effect on promotion or discouragement of centralization. He explained how Ouroboros has built-in safeguards to prevent centralization, including the K parameter, currently at 500, which caps total rewards per pool, and the alpha parameter, currently at 0 0.3, which splits rewards into a kind of 77% piece and a 23% piece. So a pool can take a share of the 77% piece based on the pool's total stake. It can take its share of the 23% piece based on the pledge of the SPO. 
So obviously the implication here is that a higher alpha parameter makes it less attractive for individual SPOs to proliferate multiple pools since they can't be as leveraged on their available pledge and still get as big a share of the 23% piece. So what we mean by that is certain pool, I don't want to use the word syndicate because it sounds pejorative, but certain SPOs have, you know, like 25 different pools and without the alpha parameter being very high, they can get away with this and just have like a very low pledge per pool. Say they have a, you know, whatever, half a million or a million ADA to split around as their pledge. If the alpha, alpha parameter is very low, it doesn't make a very big difference to them. But if the alpha parameter is high, then having to spread that available pledge money across multiple pools means they'll get a smaller piece of this 23% piece of the pie based on that smaller pledge. So if they increase the alpha parameter, it'll make it more attractive for SPOs to not spread themselves thin across a large number of pools, which obviously helps prevent Sybil attacks and creates, or let's say encourages, promotes greater decentralization of stake pools. All of this together is just more evidence of how meticulously IOHK is planning everything these days. They've learned a lot in the last several years. They're a much more professional organization. And every little step of the Alonzo rollout in between now and mainnet launch, whenever it happens, September, October, whenever, has been planned out to the minute detail. And there are a million pieces. It's a big organization. It's a big ecosystem, but it looks like they've got everything under control. This is really like the fourth quarter of a sporting event. At this point, every run is pretty much just a victory march for us guys. We've already won the game. Talk to you tomorrow.